In this video, we're going to explore the different ways to model and pattern a barrel vault or arch structure. We're going to start with the library model, uh, which is under the model builder. And when we select barrel vault, we're presented with some basic geometry. Um, so we can parametrically build a very simple barrel vault. So we apply this and run the model builder. So left click, and I'll just place it here. Now, what we're seeing is um, two vaults, so two meshes, and we have 3D polylines that represent the, the arches. So I'll just rotate this around a little bit. We also have 3D polylines fixing the edges. So the model's been built with the assumption that we've got fixed edges on all sides. So I'm going to make a copy of this and we'll just explore the alternatives. So the first step is to relax the model. So we select everything and because it's a fixed edge, we're just going to relax as a fixed edge mesh. So we don't need to take any notice of edge cable tensions because they're all fixed edges. We run the relaxation tool and we can see the fabric has dipped down between the arches. This is absolutely correct. This is the correct shape for the fabric, um, the natural form for the fabric with a one to one stress ratio. So we have the same stress in the material threads in this direction as we do in this direction. Now, in some circumstances, we may need to lift the fabric up a little bit between the arches in order to avoid uh, ponding, water ponding. Now, we do this by adjusting the weft to warp stress ratio. Now, the weft threads are going from left to right, the warp from top to bottom. So if we want to increase the tension in the fabric in this direction, we might change this to perhaps 1.5. And again, we'll relax as a fixed edge. And you can see the fabric has lifted up that little bit. Typically, we would not want to go more than a 2 to 1 stress ratio. Most by actual stress data supplied by fabric suppliers provides results for a 1 to 1 and a 2 to 1 or 1 to 2 stress ratio. Now at this stage we've just worked with a fixed edge. We'll talk about uh, patterning the arch later. Let's have a look at making a fixed edge on one side and a cable edge on the other side. So I've highlighted here the 3D polylines that represent the fixed edges in mPanel, and I've deleted them. Now this time I'm going to relax as a cable edge mesh, and the, the left, right, and bottom edges are fixed. So again, we don't need to worry about these. The cable tension in the top, however, will now actually become a cable edge. So there we can see the catenary depth. Now we can change that as normal um, if we look at a dip span ratio. So the amount of dip for the span, uh, if we say 8%, then we've got a, a, a cable tension ratio of 1.6. Now to continue on with the model building, there are circumstances where the arches are not simple and uniform, where the model builder can be used. Uh, in those circumstances, you might have um, arches that are different spaces or different lengths. So we'll represent that uh, situation by just drawing three arches. Now, what we're going to do is draw a line um, as a simple way to create a mesh for these uh, arches. So we're going to draw an edge mesh, apply, run the model builder tool, and follow the instructions. So bottom edge, 
right edge, top edge, left edge. Repeat, bottom, right, top, left. So we've reproduced the same model we had before. So I'm going to make two copies of these. These meshes. I'm going to select one set of the meshes and we're going to convert the mesh to polylines with just the edge polylines selected. Uh, run the tool, delete old. So now we have the arches and let's say we want the back again to be fixed edge. So we'll copy that and move it onto the mesh model. And once again, we relax as a cable edge mesh. And there we have the same result. Another situation which often occurs is where the middle arch has a cleat and the We'll just have a look at a photograph here. Fabric actually finishes a distance back from this tensioning device, the cleat on the end of the arch. In those circumstances, we need to truncate the arch down to whatever the thread length is for the tensioning device, um, be it a toggle bolt or a turnbuckle. So here we can see the three arches that we started with uh, we've also got a, a little line that represents the, the height uh, from the top of the arch to the tensioning bolt hole on the cleat. Now, in left view, we're going to draw a line from the tip, in other words, the, the hole where the uh, threaded device, tensioning device, um, goes through the cleat. And with ortho off, we're going to connect that to the tangent. Do the same on the other side. Take a copy of this. Again, from left view, we're going to trim the arc by that line and then we need to draw a circle that represents the length of the tensioning device so let's say 150 millimeters six inches and again in left view we're going to trim the arch down by that amount. Take another copy of this. You can delete these elements which we no longer need. We're going to use a tool to convert multi-part curve into a 3D polyline. And that will take all three elements here and make it into one 3D poly. Delete old. And there we have a 3D poly line that represents the shape of the fabric. Now we can see there's slightly different spacing uh, between the, the ends and the middle. And the simple solution there is to use the interpolate poly tool to smooth that out. So now you'll see even spacing. These other two arches we simply convert them to 3D polylines and delete old. So we're going to switch back to top view and run this time using a corner mesh rather than an edge mesh. Run the model builder tool and follow the instructions. Bottom left corner, bottom right corner, top right, top left. And do the same again for the second mesh. Now the next tool is to use uh, fixed edges. So we select the meshes and the middle arch. Run the model builder tool and it will automatically stitch the meshes to that middle arch. 
repeat that for the two end arches. And now we relax as a cable edge mesh. And we've got a barrel vault with two cable edges. If we wanted one of these edges to be a fixed edge, we'd follow the same procedure as we did before. Before relaxing the meshes, we'd add a 3D polyline as a fixed edge between these two points. Another common situation that occurs uh, in some locations where uh, extrusions are used to tension the fabric on the, uh, the end arches. So the end arch needs to be defined as, uh, in the case where there's an extrusion, um, the fabric is elevated above the, the top surface of the arch. So following this red line, um, this might be 30, 40 millimeters above the arch and obviously needs to terminate where the cable terminates. We'll have a look at that from the other side. We can see this uh, extrusion is about 50 millimeters, and so the fabric is actually going to terminate 50 millimeters inside the original line, uh, the, sorry, the original arc that we used to model the, the skin. Now, in those circumstances, if we look in top view, in this model, I'm going to take a copy of it. If we take a copy of the 3D polyline that we used as an arc here, and with ortho on, we move that 50 millimeters inside the, the fabric, and the same here. What we can see when we zoom in is face of the extrusion needs to be shortened to suit the angle of the cable as it comes into the cable termination cleat. Now a simple trick here to do this is to draw a line in each of these four corners. I'm just snapping to the middle of the edge. And then we use the trim tool to slice the end of the arch. We'll make a copy of that. I'm going to select the mesh and select the last vertex and move it to snap to the end of the new arch. We need to delete the four lines that we included. And one last step, we need to interpolate these lines because we uh, change the spacing in the ends by trimming the end off. So we use the same tool as we did before, the interpolate poly apply. We can do both at the same time. Run the tool, and then the same fix mesh edge tool, apply, and select the new inside edge and the mesh. Run the tool, delete old. To calculate the cable length in these situations, we need to add on this extra part that we've trimmed off. So we select the two meshes, use the same tool we did before to convert the meshes to polylines, just with the edge polylines. We don't need these, and in this circumstance, both of these are the same length. So we'll use again in the tools here, join polys. So we now have a length here we can look up in the properties. In this case it's uh, 10065. We need to then add to that 
this distance that we trimmed off here. So this is the distance from the face of the uh, tensioning extrusion to the cable termination cleat. And obviously we have two of those, one at each end. So whatever the length of that is, needs to be added to the cable length. OK, having finished modelling the barrel vault, we'll now look at patterning these particular meshes. So I'll take two copies just to demonstrate two different methods. So the first would be to convert multiple meshes at the same time. Uh, let's do a fixed number of panels. So we'll split each of these into three. We're going to panel normally, and we're going to straighten the seams. Now I'll turn straighten seams off to start with, and let's look at what the panels look like. Make another copy here, and this time we'll turn on straighten seams. When we use straighten seams, we've got the option to change the number of iterations, which will straighten up the edges as much as possible. So this is using geodesics in order to get the, uh, the best seam edges. And we can see here uh, the edge seams between these two panels. Let's just take a copy of these so we can inspect them carefully without the meshes. We can see when we move We've got quite a, uh, a bowed seam here. Now if we repeat this procedure with the straighten seams option selected, we'll see that that gap is actually... So this edge is not bowing in quite so much. And if we increase the number of iterations, to a higher number, that would straighten out even further. Um, the, the downside is that increases the time it takes to produce the panels. Now, another approach is to run the seams in this direction. Some companies prefer to run the seams this way. Others prefer to run it this way. Um, so in order to do that, all we need to do is panel across the mesh, apply the change, and we'll select the two again, um, run the tool, and there's our panels running across the mesh. So from there we go to the normal procedures of uh, compensation, adding seam and hem, uh, stamping the panels, and then outputting the panels to plotters and cutters. Thank you for watching. For more information, please contact support at mpanel.com.